Hey, welcome to Elevate Your Dog Summit. We are so excited you guys are here. This one is a topic, today's topic is something I've been looking forward to throughout the whole summit prep process. It's going to be incredibly important because I know a lot of you guys are looking for ways to interact with your dog and cure some boredom. So we got Boredom Busters and Enrichment Games happening with three wonderful speakers. We have Amber Carr, Nicole Ellis, and Chrissy Joy here to join you guys. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hi, Trevor. Good morning. Hey, Trevor. Good, Good morning, morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, you guys. Well, guys, welcome to the um, summit. You guys have been awesome and incredible. I can't wait um, to hear more from you guys and everything that you're doing with the summit. And But today's topic is super important, so I'm going to let you guys take it away. So without further ado, here you go. Is it Amber? Is it Nicole? Who's first? <laughs> I am. Chrissy. <laughs> Yay. All right. Are we good to go? Yes. You guys are on. We're alive. Yes. We're going. We're good. Let's rock and roll. Well, good morning, everybody. I know that if you are over in California right now, I hope you have a gigantic cup of coffee in front of you because it's early. It's early. But <laughs> yes, Nicole has her coffee. And uh, I'm just, I just want to say that good morning to everybody. Welcome to another day of quarantine day. Who knows what at this point. Um, but we're here to show you how can we keep our dogs busy and the mental enrichment and also the physical enrichment that is so important for them and their well-being. Um, we're stuck inside. We, we can't do all the activities. I mean, who here can raise a hand that missed an agility trial so far, a frisbee competition or a stunt dog trial? I mean, we are, we are definitely dealing, dealing with some cancellations across the board. So we've got our dogs home, and we need to keep them stimulated and physically fit, mentally fit. So I'm going to get started. We don't, we don't have a lot of time. We're going to roll through everybody pretty quickly today, but we all have something different to share today. But I'm so thrilled to share with you Kong products. So Kong is one of our longtime sponsors on our end of the Bonafide Talent Group. And um, so in general, we have a variety of Kong toys, and I'm going to kind of go through what are some of the simplest ones, so what are some of the newer ones, um, along with a different toy completely off the charts that I can't wait to show you. So everyone has seen the Kong toys, your general rubber toys. This is their extreme version, so it's a little for tougher chewers. I think that's a question we get and we may address later. So they have a variety of different kinds that you can put peanut butter and different treats in, dry food. And remember, guys, you can freeze these. So that's a great way to extend the time that your dog is going to be working with one of these toys. Um, but moving forward, they, they also have different kinds of kind of treat stuffer type. You see right here, this is going to be the Kong Goodie Ribbon. And so it gives you different compartments to put your treats in. Now, I'm not demoing these because I think a lot of people already know about most of these puzzlers. So, but this gives your dog an opportunity to um, go back to their instincts, which is the prey drive, the hunt drive, the seek and find kind of uh, mentality. It burns out some of that mental energy. Um, if you don't have your own peanut butter or you need something quick and easy to use, uh, Kong has these great little travel packets, which I love traveling with. It is just peanut butter, um, and it's so easy just to squeeze out into your uh, into your toys here. So I like to have those on hand. And as you see, they have the paste as well. Fun tip, uh, Nicole, you might be able to nod your head on this one. I actually like using this one on set because it's a little squeeze bottle and you can quickly reward um, peanut butter, which is so nice and convenient and a lot less messy. So that's kind of a neat tip there. And of course they have their dry cookies, which are uh, so wonderfully shaped like a Kong that fit right inside a lot of those uh, regular original Kong toys. Fun fact, guys, what we're doing today is uh, going to also be provided in three giveaways. So what I'm gonna have you guys do if you're listening in, and if you listen in later, that's great too. We're gonna pick three random winners. Uh, all I need you to do is in the comments section, say maybe what your favorite Kong toy is, the size of your dogs, and then share this on your own page so you can share other puzzle toys with other people. We're gonna get into some of the more fun Kong puzzle toys. You may have heard of the Wobbler. The Wobbler is kind of like a snowman shape. The nice part about it is that it is heavy on the bottom, which allows it to teeter 
once you put food in. Now, you can put treats in. You can put their whole meal in here. Gives you an option to change the way you feed your dog, which is nice when you're home and you need to get things done. Why don't you just put their food in a puzzle toy instead? Wobbler might be your answer. It's also very hard plastic. Might be good for some really tough chewers. I've yet to see that one get fully destroyed. However, you do want to supervise. So remember to supervise with your dog. Has anyone ever heard of this one? I don't know, Amber and Nicole, can you nod your heads? Have you seen the Kong replay? So we use it a lot in our house. Yes. 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 My dog my dogs love it. They absolutely yes. love it. The replay is so cool. It's such a neat um, yet simple uh, kind of um, structure here. So you put the treats and food in on either end. Look at that. It's got a little like so you don't lose this thing. So I'm sure everyone like, you know, get trying to juggle your treats and your dogs. So it's got little ends there that you can lock in place and fill with food. I believe it holds up to two cups, which is actually a decent amount of food. Um, and when you roll it it actually will roll back towards your dog and back and forth, offering some mental and physical stimulation. You can see Whidbey would love to play with this. Um, it also encourages the pushing and kind of um, get your dog to interact with it by themselves, which is uh, always a plus when we're very busy at home. So this is the Kong replay. Now, I need to make a note, guys, because some of you guys are going, oh, my God, I have a Papillon. How the heck are they going to play with this? Uh, they come in all different sizes. So keep that in mind that Kong really does try to tailor to different types of dogs. The next one I'm going to go over really quickly is the Kong bamboo. It's like a coconut almost. It's kind of fun. It's soft, squishy exterior, so there's some chew available there. Um, but it's a hard plastic ball, almost like your um, jolly ball, if anyone has those hard plastic jolly balls. Inside, you've got compartments. Who would be starting to play with all the toys on the ground, by the way. Got compartments, and then you can fill with treats. I would stick the dry food on this one. And it has one, two, and three on the bottom side, different areas where the food can fall out of each compartment. So it really does create um, an experience for your dog to be able to just push it. It's not just one hole. They're not getting frustrated. It gives them a lot of different um, access points. And it kind of has a fun, squishy exterior. You can kind of push your nails into it, which is neat for dogs that like to chew. It gives them kind of a little bit of satisfaction there. I also um, like that one that's really quiet. Oh, yeah. So yes. that helps. I yeah. want to add one of my dogs. These are really – some of these are really easy for. So what I actually did is I put tape on some of the holes so that they're covered up. So that it could be a little bit harder for my dog that figures these out too quickly. So you can kind of adjust them if you need be. Um, but that bamboo one, I definitely I taped one of them and then taped one of them halfway so that the food takes a little bit longer to come out. So if your dog has a hard time with it, it's a great toy. If your dog finds it too easy, you can easily make it harder. Definitely. And um, you can add some larger pieces of some type of kibble inside to slow down the pace of those little pieces falling out. So we're getting really close to the end of our Kong products. Again, I could sit here all day and go over them with you, but I do have just just uh, two more things to show you guys after this one, um, and one is the Go Bone, which is kind of my big reveal in the end, so bear with me. Whidbey loves this one. He's been eyeballing it all morning. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so we love this toy right here. This one's called the Kong Flips. It comes right out of that lovely little package there. This is kind of a simple concept, right? So you, you open up the center, which I thought was really fun, and you fill it with food, right? Same idea as all the other Kong products. But what's neat about it is that the middle part actually rotates on its own, which offers individual play that kind of changes the chambers. But the best part, it's like a super squeaker. And so you've got to do a dog who loves the uh, squeaker effect. You've got squeaker availability, and they're going to start seeking their own treats and food out of that. Yes, Whidbey would love to play with this. He'll probably play with it whether it has food in there or not, so I kind of get a double hit there. All right, now we're going to get into our technological toys. Two more, guys, and then we have fantastic speakers after me to tell you more about the mental and physical enrichment for your dog. Again, we will post links in the comment section, and don't forget, we're doing a big giveaway. So it's three random winners will be selected. All I need you to do is comment below your dog's weights, what kind of Kong toys they generally like. 
and also share to your own page so we can also share this content with our friends. Who here has heard of the Foobler? Amber, Nicole, have you heard of the Foobler before? I have not. I'm very curious. <laughs> okay. Love the Foobler. It's really great if you're busy or if you leave the house. Um, it is battery operated, so the battery operated end is on this side. And you take it out. It's got a pretty good sized battery cartridge. And then at this point, what you do is once you get that set, if I can get it back in there, um, and I'll note on the bottom side here, there is a timer. You have everything from 15 seconds, 30 seconds, uh, I'm sorry, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, and even goes to 90 minutes. So you get a lot of um, duration play through this. Now I just have to get it back on here. It's been a while since I actually removed the battery compartment. Um, give me one second. There we go. So at that point, you take the other side. And you have compartments here, and you put your dog's kibble in it. Let's say you want their meal. Maybe they eat way too fast. So this is where the fun part comes in. Let's say I have it set for every 30 minutes. I hit the button. Did you hear the dinging? So the dinging actually is where the compartment turns every 15, 30, whatever you set it at. It's going to turn and release those treats to be able to come out of this hole or this hole as they roll it around the house. Then when they've gotten out of the, all of the food out, it'll sit there and wait, and in 15 minutes it'll ding again, telling your dog, hey, come play with me, and it rotates to the next compartment. A very, very, very cool toy if you're home, away from home, and you want your dog to stay busy while you're not there. So I love this, it's called the Fubler. It's a very, very hard classic, so you can get a little noisy, but if you're not home, you don't mind. Um, but definitely keep it in an area where you don't have anything expensive that could be uh, ruined if they decide to play very rough with it. But it's called the Fubler, and it will just change, like dive, uh, go again and again until you turn it off. Um, so make sure that you do turn it off when you get home. All right. I've talked your ear off for, oh, my gosh, I'm over time today. But I have one more toy that I want to show you guys because we're all here together, and this one's really fun. It is called the Go Bone. Now, I don't know if anybody has heard of the Go Bone, but I'm going to show it. I'm putting in, it looks like a little, like, Star Wars thingy here going on. The Go Bone is so fun. I was just charging it a moment, moment ago, and you can see me putting it together right now. So I'm putting on the ends to it. This is what it looks like. Um, very hard plastic. It's got rubberized ends, and you can also put toys in there. Now, I'm on my phone because this is how I like to use it. And we're going to get the Go Bone set for you. Just make sure I have it turned on, and you'll see the little button can be turned on right here. Let me make sure I got it for you guys. And hopefully it works today. Well, if it doesn't work today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys an extra video in the comment section. But I really wanted to show this to you, and it was working just a second ago, but I think it's being a little finicky. Let me explain it to you quickly. So, the go bone. Here we go. So you got the light there turned on. We're going to put on our ends here. Here. Okay. So you can do automatic play or you can do freestyle play. This is my app. I'm going to do freestyle so I can actually operate it. Whippy, look. Whippy. If you can see it here. It's actually going to roll as I operate it with my phone, and it actually has quite a bit of um, play with your phone that you can just manipulate it. Would be loves to chew on it, and it's got a lot of hard plastic. If I can let, if I can move it for a second, then he will. And you can stuff treats in it. It actually goes pretty fast. <laughs> Once you get the go, he won't let me play it. That's awesome. Uh, 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 stay, stay. So it actually can go pretty fast. You can manipulate it all around the house. Or you can hit automatic play on your app, and it can play a certain amount of time you set on its own with your dog. So I just wanted to kind of share that with you. We love the GoBone and some of these more technological ones. But with our Kong products today that we have, all of these Kong products that we have, we do have that giveaway. I want to remind you, again, I want you in the comment section to say the weight of your dogs 
maybe your favorite Kong toy and also share it to your own page because we have a lot of stuff to go over in this show. So without further ado, I want to bring it back to uh, our next speaker, which is... Let's roll over to Amber. I know, Amber, you got right. some, I think, DIY things that you can do at home um, with some stuff. Absolutely. So I have lots of things that you guys can do with your dog. Um, so a few things I want to show you guys before we do that is I just want to show you guys licking mats because a lot of people don't know that they exist and they are amazing. They make them in a bowl form and they come in lots of different shapes and sizes. And these have been great to slow my dogs down when they're eating and also for my cats. It stopped my cat from throwing up his food when he ate it too quickly. So I'm a huge fan of these. And you can actually put tons of different wet stuff on it and put it in the freezer to make it last longer for your pet. So a few different things you guys can do with your dogs or cats <laughs> is one really famous game that we all love to play is be using a muffin tin. So I'll toss a little treat in there, put some toys over it. Now, if your dog has a hard time with this, maybe use toys that are like easy to knock off, such as stuffed animals. Oh. If it's really easy for your dog, make it harder by using things like tennis balls over the treat. So this is a super fun one. Now, I do want to show you guys one that you have to be cautious with. And any of these you do have to be cautious with because these things aren't necessarily made for dogs. So, oh, one second. Um, so this is just a simple toilet paper roll. You can stick a treat in here, fold it up at the ends and let your dog go crazy. Now, if your dog tends to swallow things, you might not want to hand this one over to them. So always supervise your dog when giving them something new. Now, another thing that I have, which you can completely customize yourself, is I have a three level toy that I made here. So the first level is just a rag. And what I'll do is I'll put a treat inside of the rag. This has to be a rag you don't care about because if you care about it, your dog might rip it up. So be aware that anything you're giving your dog, they might destroy it. So if you really care about it, maybe don't give it to them. But this is just a simple dish rag, fold it up. And this is a toy in itself. If you want to make it harder, you can take something like a cup. And this is just a regular red solo cup. And I'm sticking it inside of the cup. Now, if this is challenging for your dog, stick this stick here for a while. But if it's easy and your dog's figuring it out easily, you can stick it in something like a paper bag. Or you can stick it in something like a cardboard box and you could even close the cardboard box and make it even more difficult for your dog to work through. Now, the last one that I want to show you guys is one of my favorites because it's really quiet. So if you have a towel or a rag or a blanket that you are OK with your dog going through, Tucker's playing with the toys right now, is what I'll do is I'll take treats and I will actually roll them up in the little blanket like so and then fold it together to make it a huge puzzle toy that's literally just with a towel or a blanket. So even if you don't have Kong toys or even if you don't have all these amazing toys and interventions, you can still enrich your dog's life a little bit more with some of these challenges that you can make from your home. And that's awesome, Amber. I like the DIY stuff. We see a lot of people loving it too in the comment section. I mean, like... If your dog is super destructive, it's so awesome to have the stuff that Chrissy talked about with so that I really have the mindset. Like Kong has such a mindset of like making sure things are very, very durable. Um, but like DIY stuff can be super important. And actually that crinkly bag sound sometimes in the beginning stages for dogs will start to kind of make them want a little bit shy about it. And getting past that fear of like the crinkly bag sound is so great for the dog. Like they can really thrive on that because it starts to learn how they can tackle little goals like crinkly bag sounds to bigger goals like uh, maybe the truck dump truck that comes out once a week I mean those are all really great things absolutely I think that all of these are really confidence boosters because your dog is learning to problem solve they're learning to work through unsure objects themselves so these are great ways to boost your dog's confidence but these are just a few DIY D D I can't even say it. <laughs> These are a few things you can do at home. Um, but if you guys have other ideas and really cool things that you do with your dog that I didn't share, feel free to share so that all of us can benefit and enrich our pets' lives a little bit more. Awesome. That's good. So we'll jump over to Nicole now. And Nicole, show us what you got. Okay. We have quite a few toys to go over, starting with the Nina Audison by Outward Hound Brick. 
Um, this is a level two one. Nina Omison offers multiple levels. This is the one I usually start dogs off with because you can make it super easy. These white bones come out and these open up, slide in those little compartments. So you can make it super easy starting without these. Then adding this in, adding some treats. Um, Rossi here loves this. I like it because there's so much for them to do. They have to push things, move with their nose, their paws, keep them busy. You can make it harder by not putting treats in every section. I also recommend using their regular food as well so they're not just working for treats all the time. So that one is The Brick Game by Nina Audison. And they do have harder levels. I know they're coming out with a bunch more, too. Um, and this one's level two. They have level three ones also. Okay, have more. Okay. Um, next up. He's playing with the puzzle game <laughs> very loudly. Okay, we're going to take that away, Rossi. Is the Wobble Ball. This is by Pet Play. This is the Christmas version. They have different versions. Christmas all year round for us. Um, what I love <laughs> awesome. about this one is it has three different openings for treats, but they're different sizes. So if I had small treats, it makes it easier. It comes out of all the holes. If I had big treats, it's going to make it a harder game because it'll only fit through the larger ball. Um, what's great about this one is it unscrews so we can easily clean it, which is something I like because Rossi is a licker. He likes to stick his tongue through everything. So I'm able to properly clean it. And this keeps both the dogs super busy. He knocks it around, bats it around, hits it on the walls and everything. And it's held up really strongly. It's definitely one of his favorites. There's nothing in it. He'll probably start playing with it. <laughs> Another food one. This is just like almost a regular ball. There's so many treat balls out there. I love this one by Pet Play called the Nova Ball because it's super squishy. So we actually do play fetch with it. Um, it's super bouncy. And then it's great for dogs who almost don't know how to play fetch. We can add some treats into it, get them excited for it, teaching them to play fetch. I can also put treats in it any day, and he'll keep himself occupied for probably hours, and so will Maggie here. Um, and the hole's pretty flexible, so we can put bigger treats in it or smaller treats, depending how good your dog is at playing these sort of things, how food motivated, and what size dog you have. I know that's really fun. He's like, oh, wait, all my toys are coming out. Okay, now... We're going to move on to some little bit different toys and a little bit away from the food, which I know people are worried about giving their dogs too many treats. You got to move my feet. Big one. <laughs> this is the iDig by iFetch, and it's composed of these different flaps. They hook in. It's three different ones, but you can put up to six. Each flap has different compartments. This one has like a scratchy sound. And then the paw has different compartments. I know. Hold on. So to start him off, I usually do use treats on this one. But I also put often his favorite toys, his waffle, his taco, et cetera, in here. So I like that it doesn't always have to be just food. Put it in. Hold on, Rossi. I know. And he likes this one so much that he is taken to playing it whenever it's out. So I have to put this away, and I recommend putting away toys that your dogs aren't playing with. It makes them more exciting when they come out. Hold on. I'm going to tilt it down just so we can see him. Yeah, that's great. Hold on. Let's put treats in, Rossi. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Thank you. Okay. Go. See something. Here, Rossi. And so this makes him mentally and physically tired, which I love. Go crazy. And he will probably do this for half an hour and then go to sleep inside of it. <laughs> okay, good boy. I'm going to move that aside. Okay, we're going to move that. We're going to move it. Side, side, side. <laughs> okay. And we're going to quickly go over two more things. One of Maggie's favorites. This is the iFetch. They have two fetching products. This is the iFetch. They also have the iFetch 2, which is for larger dogs. They use regular sized tennis balls or any balls that are tennis ball sized. So um, this one has a delay when it shoots while the iFetch 2 is instant. It's going to shoot it out. And each one has three different settings. The smallest one on each one is 10 feet. So even the big dog one, the small dog one, we can play it indoors, which is something I love. Maggie. Wanna play with you? Ignore him digging up there. Ready? Maggie, put it in. Put it in. I know you. 
You need this, baby. also great for people who maybe aren't as able-bodied or we have dogs that just fetch all day long. Nicole, I can really, really tell that he likes the eye dig. Sorry. I think the eye dig is definitely a winner in your house. Right? <laughs> I think the eye dig is a winner. Nicole, do they make do they make eye digs for larger dogs as well? So it fits both sizes. Um, my dogs use it differently. Like, Rossi has his hind feet out. Maggie puts all her feet in. They have hit Rossi. He got it away. Sorry, everyone. Let me move this. <laughs> he won't stop. <laughs> um, they have the I dig stay and the I dig go. That's the stay. It's a harder shelled one while the go folds up. The go I wouldn't recommend for little dogs. It's just so flexible. But this one and the go could be used for big dogs. My friend has a pit bull that uses this size one. Um, he rips out the pieces and they just snap back in. So he's pretty, he drags it around the house and he's pretty hard on his toys and it's still going strong. <laughs> and what's your favorite? But it's nice being able to put it away and then bring it out when I, he needs some enrichment. I need some quiet time. Keeps him super busy, food or no food. A lot of times they get the treats out and they're just kind of done. And that's not how it's been for the I did. Um, lastly, before we wrap up really quickly, Wanted to go over a little bit of a mental game of scent work. Um, scent work something my dogs and I compete in. Maggie, and it's great for puppies. I started Rossi and scent work at about 10 weeks old. Maggie didn't start till she was about seven. No, later than that. And she's 12 now. Um, a fun little story about Maggie is I lost my phone while hiking with Jamie of Blue Nine in Joshua Tree. And she actually found it a mile into the desert using scent work. So we have a blog all about it. They're both trained on my scent, and then they're trained on competition scent, which is usually birch and then anise and clove. But scent works something you guys can do at home. Um, a great way. Our dogs love using their noses, so it gives them an opportunity to do something that they love. They have innate desire to sniff. Can you show them how? So a couple ways we can do this is either starting with some cardboard boxes. I know we're all been buying things off Amazon. Great time to save some of those. Or some, like, similar bowls. Just grab little tiny bowls. And I usually just put them all out. You're going to want usually around the same things. And in one of them, I put some treats. So they're going to learn over time. It's going to take them a minute. Why are all these bowls on the floor? Why are all these boxes on the floor? I usually put my dogs on leash and walk them around the area, letting them sniff and sniff. And then they're going to find the one with all the treats. And hooray. Oh, I know it's so yummy. <laughs> He's like, oh, this is great. And same thing with the boxes. They're putting their heads somewhere new. So it might be a little bit strange for some dogs. And then when you're ready, you can start using an odor. Um, I usually start with birch because that's what we do in competition. You can buy birch scented Q-tips online anywhere. And then I put them inside like a tin or a little Tupperware or something. And I start putting the treats in that container with this. So as he's eating it, he's going to sniff this odor and he's going to pair it. Um, also sometimes put this. Q-tip tin right in his food bowl. Okay, I know it's really fun, Rossi. So as he's eating his dinner, he's soaking up that odor. Um, don't do too much of it. It makes our dogs really tired. It's a lot of mental thinking of something they don't normally do. And I keep pairing it for quite a while just to make sure my dogs get that connection. And once they're beginning to get it, I could put my tin on the ground with the treats right next to it and let him search in a small area in the house. Keep him on leash will probably help him. No. And I'll help him search out that odor. Um, something that people always ask me is, won't my dogs want to sniff everywhere now? And that's kind of a concern of everybody's. So what I do is I use a specific word for scent work. My dogs have different words for, like, search, find it. And I also put a specific collar. My dogs don't wear martingales, so I only use a martingale during scent work. So right before we search, I slide that collar on. You could use a banana, a specific different harness maybe you don't use. So then they learn this is scent work time. And as soon as we're done, take it off and no more sniffing. Um, but it's a great way to get our dogs using their noses and having fun together. And you learn a lot about your dog's body language, which is something I love.
In fact, like one of the time when I actually did nose work with one of my dogs, Clyde, it actually definitely helped our communication in general. Because you think about it, like I think it was um, Alexandra Horowitz that said when um, humans turn their heads, they're looking with their eyes. When dogs turn their heads, they're looking with their nose. So they see the world so much with their nose. And it's an incredible part of their world and communication with their world. So when you get to learn to understand that, when you get to learn to communicate to them and help them find really cool, you know, items like scents and treats, even like that makes the dog really want to even listen to you even more because they're like, oh, you get me. But you can imagine like if you're trying yeah. to talk to, um, you know, you've probably actually already been there. You know, it's like if you ever try to talk to somebody in a language that you don't speak, it's really hard to like connect sometimes and communicate what you need. And so... Think about that with your dog when you don't understand how they're seeing their world of smell. And when I did scent work classes with my dogs, it definitely opened my mind to like where scent is coming from, how it's drifting and all that stuff. And it made like my understanding of Clyde's needs so much um, better um, because of that. So I think it's such a great tool to do scent work with your dogs. And it really works their brains and which is going to help them physically tire out too. Absolutely. And like if you videotape it, you'll probably notice things about your dog that you didn't really see before, which is something I love. I just taught a whole class on it, and each dog has a different signal. Some dogs wag their tail differently. It starts going in a circular motion. Some dogs, it's just a quick glance up. It might be a head lower. But a lot of times we can't notice it because we're so, like, intense and trying to figure it out that sometimes making a video and you play it back, you're like, oh, my gosh, my dog's body did change or this changed, and I didn't notice it. So, yeah, amazing, super fun to do. No, no. incredible Absolutely. you guys this I has been such a great time. topic like i think we have helped so many people with so many different ideas um and guys if you guys want any further have any further questions on anything that um that nicole chrissy or amber have said specifically about stuff don't be afraid to message them on facebook on instagram and reach out um, follow their channels because they have so many tips that they're posting every single day to help you guys be successful with your dog. So I highly recommend that. We put a bunch of their links in the comment section, and also you can, I've tagged them all up in the comment section as well. If you guys um, could also let us know what you thought about today, um, please go ahead and comment, like, and share, especially if you're interested in getting in that giveaway. Does anybody else, any other of our awesome, amazing speakers have anything else to say? Any questions down below, put them in the comment section. Yeah, I did want, oh, sorry. <laughs> I did want to share one more thing with you all, um, which is something that I'm a huge fan of right now. And it's not for every single dog, but I'm a huge fan of dog TV right now. Um, a lot of people are really focused on enrichment when it comes to food um, or physical exercise, but our dogs spend a lot of time at home. And right now we're at home with them, but a lot of times they're by themselves. And dog TV is really cool because it's TV that's catered specifically to help dogs see it better. And it plays things that dogs would enjoy watching. So it has goes through motion. It goes through different sounds. And so you can enrich your dog's life as well through sound and sight, which a lot of people don't actually think about. Um, and they're actually giving away this month for free. So if you go to the link, which I'll put it in the comments below, um, you guys can try dog TV out for free and see if that's something that your dog enjoys. I also know my cats are huge fans of dog TV. So I just wanted to plug that in there really quick because they have a really cool program going on. Yeah. I saw... I To add to that really quickly, I know Amber said Dog TV is doing a free month. A lot of these companies are doing stuff since our, we are kind of stuck at home right now with our dogs. All mine are just going crazy here. Um, so, for example, iFetch is doing a coupon code till the 15th of April. I believe it might be in the comments. If not, I'll add it. Um, pet play we have a 20 percent off code and they're also currently doing free shipping which is something they don't often do so really makes these things a little bit more affordable as well and these are companies that don't do discounts often so if you are in the market not just for these but any other product take a look online now and they might be offering something special to help us out i know we're all spending a lot of money on our pets at the moment <laughs> all right you guys, guys thank you for joining and, today um, oh chrissy go just, just want to remind you guys, the con giveaway, so share this, but in the comment section, also put your your dog size, maybe a favorite kind of con toy you may already have, and don't forget to share this, so you, not only can you be entered in the random uh, giveaway, we're going to pick three winners and send you a bunch of con goodies, 
Uh, but share it so we can help other people who are also at home and kind of are looking for something, whether they purchase it, make it, or decide to train a little bit and, um, and get our dogs motivated and working. I think that was Thank the most you. awesome part about this whole topic and this whole thing was we need to kind of tackle major parts, you know, what you can purchase, what you can make, and what you can train. So you guys were incredible. I, this has probably been one of my favorite live streams I've ever done, and I think you guys are awesome. So thanks, everybody, that joined here. And if you're watching all this on replay, thank you so much for watching. We still love you guys for watching replay. I know this is early for some of you guys. Nicole's actually also on the West Coast, so she's up here super early. So thanks, Nicole, for joining I'm us early. Outside. And then so if you guys are just joining us on replay, comment as well I mean seriously we love all, all of you guys and we want to make sure to answer any questions that you guys might have and thank you guys for joining and um, thank you, everyone. bye bye for now everybody thank you, thank you guys Good. <laughs> thank you so much everyone bye guys